Listen up kid, back in my day we had real Pokemon with real stats. For example, okay, not that one. Dang, not that guy either. Okay, wh what about this one? Yeah, 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 no, no. That's the one I remember. Unfortunately, Mewtwo isn't legal for about 60% of all VGC formats, and when he is, he's actually kind of mid. But that brings me to a pretty important note here. Why is it that Gen 1 Pokemon are, for the most part, pretty bad? Well, the simple answer is power creep, and the longer answer is Game Freak only gives, like, two Pokemon a buff every generation, so at this point, we should have a fully viable Gen 1 dex by Gen 40? During Gen 7, we actually did see Game Freak give a lot of tweaks to old Pokemon stats, abilities, and movesets, like how Dodrio gained access to Jump Kick, granting it a pretty useful fighting coverage move, despite it being a flying type. Even in Generation 9's DLC, we saw Pokemon like Shiftry and Torteo from other generations gain some pretty notable buffs to their kits. I think today, we should take a look at Generation 1's stinkers and try to get them on par with some of the newer Pokemon, or at the very least, grant them a niche and competitive, even if only a small one. We won't be giving Raticate huge power, and we won't be giving Pidgeot Wonder Guard, so let's try to make these real nuanced buffs. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video at any point in time, you should leave a like on the video and subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content. As a matter of fact, if you enjoyed this, you should definitely sub right now because I have a big playlist full of content just like this for you to watch right after this video. Alright, let's get into it. We're going to be going in the dex order because that's like the order I read these in and then buff them in. How convenient. Now, not every Gen 1 Pokemon needs a buff actually. I mean, Arcanine is a staple of regional dex formats and we don't really need to talk about how great Dragonite is in Generation 9. All the starters also have tons of tools that are pretty decent, all things considered. So let's begin with... The single scariest Pokemon I can think to encounter in real life has to be Beedrill, and yet his stats tell me that I could totally shove this dude into a locker and he'd just start buzzing around like a bee trapped in a soda can. Yet, as a poison bug type, it's not the best Pokemon offensively or defensively. So what do we do? We double down. First of all, we need to make sure this dude has at least 40% of the glass cannon traits it had when it was a Mega. So let's begin with the speed. I want to hit base 112. That's exactly one point faster than the Genies. This means that it's a pretty decent fast tailwind setter itself, and in the face of these Pokemon, it can reliably U-turn out. Speaking of U-turn, we should take a page out of the Mega's book and grant it adaptability as an ability. This will change its stab multiplier on its moves from 1.5 to 2. So while 90 base attack isn't super strong, it can start picking up a decent amount of damage across the board with stab, poison, and bug moves, while also having coverage in drill run and, I don't know, Terrorblast. Also, there's a lot of Pokemon on this list, so I'm not going to dwell on any one for too long, so let's move on. Pidgeot has some atrocious stats, with only one of them being above base 100, and just barely. Congrats, you outspeed Charizard and Urshifu, but good luck doing anything to them with your base 80 attack stat. Now, the struggle with buffing regional birds is making sure that one isn't just a straight up upgrade to another, especially with so many being normal and flying type, they're gonna step on each other's toes a lot. What I want to do here is make Pidgeot sort of a side grade to Talonflame. Talonflame is a fast fire and flying type with Gale Wings, an ability that grants it priority on flying moves until its HP is below 100%. Let's give this ability to Pidgeot. Along with that buff, its special attack and attack stats need to be increased by 15 points, leaving it at 95 attack and 85 special attack. This means that where Talonflame is a fast support Pokemon with Gale Wings, Pidgeot is a much bulkier and much harder hitting Pokemon with base 95 attack priority Brave Bird or base 85 special attack priority Hurricane. It's a rat. It's got guts and stab on facade. Honestly, we need to be careful here because if we overtune this thing too much, he might be broken. I'm just kidding. But if we don't buff it enough, it'll be garbage. I'm electing to move 10 of its special attack to its speed, so it'll hit base 107 speed and still be able to hit Pokemon pretty hard with guts facade. No longer will it be outsped by Urshifu in one shot. He's going to be outsped by Ogrepan in one shot like a real Pokemon. Okay, remember what I said about not making the regional birds have to compete with each other too much? Well, Firo was a really tough one to make work. In my opinion, when a Pokemon is hard to buff, it's best just to give it utility moves, and in this case, that's exactly what I did. I think the niche that we can grant Vera is being a faster tailwind setter with base 100 speed while giving it scrappy and the move faint. Faint will allow for Firo to break Pokemon's protection for partners to combo into, and with scrappy, not only will it be immune to intimidate, meaning its base 100 attack stat won't be nerfed even further, but it will also be able to click faint on ghost types like Golden Go or Fluttermane, breaking their protection and once again allowing a combo to go into them. So let's go ahead and grant it knockoff while we're at it. I mean, to be honest, it kind of needs that move too, just so someone can consider it over another Pokemon. 
Okay, this is like my second favorite idea from this video. Sand Slash is a really sad Pokemon conceptually. I, it literally has nothing over Excadrill, like at all. Excadrill is pretty much just a direct upgrade with better overall bulk, speed, and attack, and also access to stab on its steel moves. So let's make Sand Slash an Excadrill side grade. If Excadrill can hit harder than Sand Slash, I don't think it has any business being any faster than it. So let's move 5 HP to Sand Slash's speed along with 20 of its special attack. This will bring Sand Slash to a total of 90 base speed, making it just a bit faster than Excadrill. Let's also give it head long rush to make up for that middling attack stat and worse offensive typing. And finally, it's really a crime that this thing doesn't get spiky shield. I can actually see this thing being a pretty decent physical sweeper with sand rush allowing it double speed next to Pokemon like Tyranitar. <laughs> we really need an offensive alternative to Clefairy. Friend Guard is an ability that decreases the damage dealt to partners by opposing Pokemon. Currently, the only viable Friend Guard users are Mousehold and Eevee like Clefairy. In my opinion, by making Wigglytuff an offensive special attacking Friend Guard Pokemon with less supportive tools, it inherently grants it more value than Wigglytuff would have otherwise, literally just by existing on the field. Also, let's give it Boom Burst. I mean, Wigglytuff deserves a move that doesn't hit like a ball of wadded up tissue paper. <laughs> Okay, there's some favoritism at play here, I'm gonna be honest. I actually really love Parasect, and I can't explain why. He's he's just neat, you know? But the issue is, it has an awful defensive typing in Grass Bug, and just isn't as reliable as Amoongus. Parasect lacks the longevity of Regenerator Amoongus and the utility of Pollen Puff. So, how do we give it value over Amoongus in certain matchups? Easy. Let's make it slower. Amoongus' main weakness is its negative matchup into the likes of Torkoal, which is 10 speed points lower than it. I propose that we move 10 of Parasect's speed into its defense stat, not only making it bulkier, but also making its speed tie Torkoal, thus making it a situationally better Pokemon than Amoongus, while also making it so the Torkoal matchup isn't completely unwinnable. You still technically have a 50% chance of winning that. Also, it needs Pollen Puff. I, I really don't know how it doesn't have this move already. <laughs> Okay, buckle up. This one is probably the coolest buff on the whole list. So Persian is your run-of-the-mill normal type that doesn't do anything super well, it just kind of exists. Yes, it has high base speed, but its attack stat is still far too low to accomplish anything. So let's move some of its special attack into its attack stat until it hits base 90, or maybe even 100, I'm not certain. Let's also give it Tail Slap so it has a real threatening move to take advantage of the ability technician, but that's not all. I had this idea. You see, Payday is the original move that scatters coins everywhere. Make It Rain was introduced in the Generation 9 as the signature move of Golden Go. This move is a 120 base power spread special steel move that lowers Golden Go's special attack step by one stage every time it's clicked. So why don't we turn Payday into a normal type physical clone of Make It Rain? Imagine a base 115 speed normal type with a choice band smacking your whole team with a base 120 normal move that can actually deal damage now. I mean, it's not difficult to play around, but it'd still be a pretty decent mon all things considered. <laughs> Fat Float Soul. Why don't you have Wave Crash? Polyrath is weird. Like, it's it's another one that's kind of hard to buff, so the only idea I really had for it was to move some of the special attack set into its attack until it hits 105, and then give it Wave Crash. Effectively, it's bulkier Float Soul that's a little bit slower and also has hypnosis and access to some fighting coverage. I, I don't know. I, I think it's it's an interesting concept, so there you go. Fat Float Soul. What more can you ask for? Fat Float Soul. All good things come to an end. Most signature moves of Pokemon eventually are given to other Pokemon, so let's go ahead and just rip the band-aid off of Glamora. I think that we can give Mortal Spin to Tentacruel. As a fast special defensive water poison type, Tentacruel can pretty reliably click Mortal Spin into the opposing team while also having options like Knock Off or Ice Beam at its disposal to deal with Pokemon like, I don't know, Landorus? Glamora can't do that. It would literally just be a good Pokemon at that point. But let's not stop there. I mean, this thing's a jellyfish, so let's drop one of its abilities to give it Regenerator. This would give it more longevity in VGC matches just by the fact that it can click Mortal Spin, poison a few Pokemon, and then switch out and switch back in, getting 33% of its health back. Uh, I don't know, man. If we give it like 20 points in every single stat, it'd still be really bad. So let's do 30? Rhyhorn has a horn and lightning rod. Sea King has a horn and lightning rod. So what's up with Dugong? I, I don't really care for Dugong, so I didn't want to put too much thought into this one. So I don't know. Let's just let's just give it lightning rod. Okay, so Hypno actually has some pretty insane moves in its toolkit, from Hypnosis to Encore to Disable and even Dual Screens. Honestly, its stats are pretty awful, only its special defense is like actually good. So let's buff it the same way every support Pokemon with bad stats gets buffed. Let's give it Prankster. With access to these tools along with its garbage stats, it's basically just going to become the love child of a Sableye and Screamtail. It wouldn't be great as there's tons of competition for this role, but it also wouldn't be bad. There'd be some specific use cases for this guy, unlike now where you really just can't justify you using it on any team, whether it be a competitive justification or even an aesthetic one. I mean, look at him. This guy isn't anyone's favorite Pokemon, it, at least no one I want to meet.
Okay, who decided to give Marowak Rockhead and no abilities that make use of it outside of Double Edge? A Rockhead, that's who. Marowak is a physical attacking ground type, so it literally has to compete with the likes of Great Tusk and Landorus Therian. That's not an easy pool of Pokemon to outdo. I don't know if you know that, it's, it's pretty hard to outdo those Pokemon. So let's just lean into it being a wall breaker with an exclusive item in Thick Club that grants it double attack instantly. I have no clue why this dude doesn't already have access to Wild Charge and Head Smash to take advantage of Rockhead, so let's just give it that. And while we're at it, let's give it Headlong Rush. I mean, whenever there's a bad ground type that needs to compete with other ground types, you should really just give it that. At the very least, that will make it so Trick Room teams have to consider Marowak before ultimately going with Ursaluna. At this point, I'm running out of ideas, and once again, I don't particularly care for Sea King, but I'm sure someone does, so how about this? It already has an electric community with Lightning Rod, so let's grant it normal typing to give it stab on normal moves, while also giving it a ghost immunity. Will it be good? No, but it'll be better. And finally, the last Pokemon that I want to buff is going to be Kabutops. Now, funnily enough, Kabutops and Dreadnought have like really similar roles. Shockingly similar, in fact. I mean, they have the same type and ability and attack stats. So let's mess with Kabutops so it has its own identity. I mean, its old one got stolen in Generation 8, so. You see those scythes? They're pretty sharp. Let's give it the ability sharpness so it can have some extra damage in all those slashing moves. Let's also grant it Stone Axe and Aqua Cutter so it actually has some stab options for that ability. You don't want to just be clicking Slash and Night Slash and I don't know, does get Psycho Cut, we'll give it that too, why not? That'll actually make it so it's a pretty decent lead with Focus Sash that can threaten the likes of Incineroar and Landorus with a one-shot even after an Intimidate. It'll also not pigeonhole it into needing to be a Swift Swim Pokemon every time you run it. I don't know, Kabutops is a really cool design and I just wanted to make sure I could do it some justice. I think this would probably take care of it. As a matter of fact, I think when it comes back, this will probably be what they go with. I think Game Freak would actually have to be kind of like not paying attention to not give the sharp rock scythe Pokemon access to sharpness. But yeah, those are all the Gen 1 Pokemon I'd like to buff and how I would go about doing it. There's a lot of them, so I didn't have time to go in depth with the repercussion of these changes, which I'll do that in a future video. If you guys want to see me take a crack at trying to buff the Generation 2 Pokemon in Johto, let me know in the comment section down below because we all know they really need the help. Johto is one of the worst competitively balanced generations of all time. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate the support. And if you want to take your support a step further, be sure to check out my Patreon page for some bonus content and to see your name at the end of my videos. Or you can do the same by clicking the join button below the video to become a channel member. Special thank you to my most boosted supporters, Canor, Joseph B, and Narwiz for their generous pledges. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.